goodness. Hello there, everybody. Hopefully everyone is having a wonderful evening, day, night, whenever it is you see this. Um, yeah, we, we have some fun. Oh, we had a great stream last night, but none of y'all heard it. <laughs> yeah. We were having some technical difficulties. I had to update my computer and fix my microphone. Oh, God, no. I tell them the dramatic parts of this. Oh, my God, it was the end of the fucking world. You know, we're having this great stream, teaching all sorts of cool shit. And we get a message, nobody can hear you. And I'm like, fuck. And so we start playing with it. We spend half of the night trying to figure out this microphone, right? Right. And then part of today, a good part of today, <laughs> trying to figure it out. And it was something absolutely ridiculous. But Ray's all freaking out. I'm like, just take a breath. Hey! Hey! Hope! Yep, Granny She's was... yelling at her pole. At her water bowl. Granny had to tell me to take a breath because I was getting frustrated. Yes, um, it was very... Why don't you grab the bottle of water and give her some water before she screams at that water bowl like she likes to do. Do we have any fun in here? No, we don't have any in here. Gosh darn it. I know. Her. The life of a puppy mom. Stay. No, you stay. just stay here, Elford. You're good. Stay. Hey, hey! Elford! Can you hear us? He's probably like, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. No, this is the epitome of my week. And that's why I just kind of laughed shit off today. Because, man, what the hell? 
talk about a shit storm and a half, and then it's like, right on. Yeah. Now, I just find it interesting that at certain points in your life, Dogs bark at everything you say. Ah. <laughs> <coughs> no audio again. Huh? Ah. Uh, it's audio. Okay. Get your dog. Hold on. It's a belligerent little cuss. <laughs> Great. So the dogs and Ray ran out of the room for a minute. I was going to finish my thought here. You know, life gets like that sometimes. Everything seems like a shit storm and it really kind of depends on how you deal with it or how you react to it. And I'm always saying, and I know if you listen, you've heard this, the only thing we truly have control over in life is our reaction to things, right? So you could get all upset. You could get pissed off. You could get whatever and yeah some of this shit pissed me off I was just like are you fucking kidding me but ultimately it was a short little what the fuck and then I got on with my life because ultimately if it doesn't affect you directly it's nothing to really be concerned about to the point that it's you're becoming obsessive over it And it's just funny because life is like that. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And that's how it always is. And people just misconstrue it as, oh my God, the universe is plotting against me. And I've been guilty of that in my lifetime. But for the most part, it's just life. Shit gets fucked up. Enjoy the good times. Endure the bad times. And really, really take joy in just the ordinary I don't know that's my secret to life but shh. Honestly, I don't know how people do this. Ray's not here, so I'm like, what do I talk about? I feel weird. Don't listen to me. And the dogs are generally well behaved. They just don't like us talking to people, ever. That's my mama's. My mama's. You can't have them. Oh, the funny story. A lot of people don't know this, but the term ankle biter actually came from blue healers because that's what they do to the cattle. They bite their ankles and they've got like these massive teeth so that they can like really make it hurt so that they can hurt them easily. And that's where they, and they like to chase people and bite their ankles. That's where they uh, got the term ankle biter.
you gonna come over here and bark at me? She might come over and bark at you. She always barks at me. Hmm, you never know with her. Rule 101, never look a blue healer in the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Brennan. Ah! Hey! Okay, really? Hope. Come. Hope, come. <laughs> Don't you be stubborn, puppy, right That'd now. problem. Hey, hey. Ray. You know, it's all good, and Elford loves her, but she gets mean and obnoxious. You need to pull her away. She's being rough, and she shouldn't, because it makes him mad. On it. Where is her fox? Hey, hey! <laughs> Tenacious little shit! Um, I need flashlight. <laughs> <coughs> I told you that frickin' blue healer puppies are psycho. You didn't believe me. So I was just talking about how that's just kind of life. All the problems we've been having and all the crazy shit going on and people coming up out of the woodwork causing problems and... Um, answer to life turtles? No, they don't. They just want to see if they can bring out your old behaviors. And well, you know what? There's a point in your life where you realize that those old behaviors don't serve any purpose anymore, so they stop, right? That's right. And well, you know, that's where I'm at. I'm sorry shit didn't work out for you, but, you know, I did my own damn thing, and I'm fucking happy, and nobody's going to take that away from me, right? Right. But it is what it is, right? Right. And that's what you got to accept in life a lot of times, is that things aren't always as they appear. Yeah. And people don't always say what they say they want. Or say they want something but want something totally different. And yeah, it, it's just insane. No, I hear you slip me up. You know, it is what it is, but it doesn't really. I mean, we're talking about it because obviously it did have somewhat of an impact on my week, but. In essence, what it really did was it made me feel sorry for these people. I mean, okay, one of my things, and a lot of people don't get this about me, is that I have a damn business, right? Right. So, when people ask me, oh, you support my music, right? That becomes a very complicated question for me. Mm-hmm. Because there are very few bands that I work with that I am truly a fan of. And, well, you know what? If I went around picking favorites, then what would that do? Yeah. We talked about this in the interview. I like different bands for different reasons. And the people behind the bands, you know, some of them I appreciate the music the band puts out, but don't much care for the people. But, I mean, it's one of those things. So when you come at me and ask me if I support your music, if I haven't openly done it, the answer is probably no. Are you a client of mine? Have we worked together? Have you paid me to take pictures of you? Yeah, well, that's what our relationship is. Don't treat me like I'm a fucking fan. Let's be honest here. I shoot a lot of music I don't like, but you'd never know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't like loaded questions, and then people get mad when you tell them, hey, you know, that really sounds like a loaded question, and then they get mad when you explain to them the scenario, because, and I was talking to another person, a, a rapper that's coming up in the scene that's from Colorado that's really sweet and overcome a lot of shit in her life, and I've been trying to help her with some of the ins and outs of stuff, and 
Yeah, one of the things I told her today was that when it comes to shit like that, you cannot mix, you cannot mix up friendship and business. Because you may think that they're your friend, but it's actually a business relationship, right? Right. I mean, you will always be friends to an extent. Because you won't work with people that you don't like, right? right? But when it comes to business, it's business first, friendship later. At least if you're smart. And that's just the way I feel on it. Because that shit fucks shit up quicker than shit. <laughs> well. Why, why don't you... Uh... Tell us something interesting you learned this week. Oh, you're going to go back to that? Mm. Oh, we did that last night, but nobody heard it. So obviously the universe does not want them to learn this information from me. <laughs> <laughs> what information are you talking about that I learned? Because I learned a lot this weekend, or this past week. Well... Start with something simple. I learned that my bonus son is one hell of a guy and smart as fuck, even if he doesn't hear it from anybody else on this planet. I mean, dude, he studied psychology, so we sit down and have these amazing conversations about every fucking thing. And it's nice because we both have the training, but mine is in anthropology per and it pertains to to the human experience whereas he was going to actually be a psychiatrist so he has training that I don't and fills in gaps for me and I fill in gaps for him because they don't teach them from my perspective which I think is really fucking cool I could sit and talk to this kid for days and I just gotta tell you I'm proud as fuck you know, I, I told him when I told you this, the thing that I've always waited for was for my kids to be old enough to be able to be their friends. I mean, it'll all awful someday, and you gotta let your kids be their own people, right? Right. Not a good idea. And it's not like I'm going out drinking with you and doing all sorts of crazy shit. It's... Woohoo! Crazy party mom! Oh, yeah. <laughs> What did it take for you to do, get me to do a shot with you on your 21st birthday? Dude, do you know how long it had been since I had drinking? Wasn't that like the six-year-old bottle of Tawaka? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that shit gets even better over time, I'm telling you. I fucking love Tawaka. If y'all are looking for an interesting but festive uh, drink for the holidays, as in Christmas, Tawakanog is the fucking shit. Okay, what is the pot problem here, guys? Hold on, everybody. No, we are not doing this. You're going to go lay down. Go to the corner where bad dogs go. Nope.
see it. I went out the room with the dogs and all sorts of weird shit starts happening on the computer. I didn't touch it, I swear to god, I didn't touch it. <laughs>
Sorry for the delay. The pups are being extra ornery tonight, I guess. Either that or the owl took off with my daughter. And I'm kind of scared to go out there either way. <laughs> so just hang on. We'll be back. Hopefully the dogs will stop their barking and be worn out enough to just go to sleep. We got some cool stuff tonight, so just hang in there.
The owl We're didn't better. get her. <laughs> <laughs> so, how would you feel about Lego food? Like build your own food. Um. First off, what the fuck? And second off, I happen to cook from scratch, and isn't that basically what that is? Yeah. What, you know, I like dinner so. the other night, did I not, like, piece everything together to make your... Coup de gras? <laughs> that, well, isn't that what it is? Isn't that what cooking is to begin with? Mm-hmm. So, in essence, all food is Lego food because you got to put it together to get something out of it. I mean, look, okay, cheesecake. Cheesecake is four ingredients. Six if you include the, seven if you include the uh, crust. Right? Right. So, if you did not put those ingredients together properly, you wouldn't have cheesecake. Right. You're right. And well, if you don't do it right, you don't get the fucking Millennium Falcon, right? Yes, you do. No, you don't. <laughs> My brother had one, and we could never get it to look like the fucking Millennium Falcon. I suck at Legos, I guess. Well, I did then. Not so much these days, but... Yeah. Isn't it funny? No, what we did was marbles. We would make these my mom and dad found. And, and you gotta figure, I'm fucking old as dirt, literally. And uh, they used to have these little pieces that were wood and blocks to stack them on and stuff like that. And they had holes in them so that you could make this marble run. And we used to make some elaborate ass marble runs and just sit there for hours running the marbles through them. And then switch shit up to see if it would work. Yeah. And that was like one of my favorite things to do as a kid. That and the dominoes. We'd set up dominoes and do little fucking knock them over things all over the house. My mom made us stop doing it when we did them all down the stairs from the third floor. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Oh, it was. It was. It was very time consuming, so I'm sure my parents loved it. <laughs> well, tell me about your tree. What tree? Your favorite tree. My favorite tree? Mm hmm. You mean Love the Oak Tree in the backyard of the house I grew up in? Yeah. And that's her name, Love. We called her Love. Oh, what do you want to know about that tree? Anything. She's probably huge by now if she's still alive. But she was a little thing. Not, not too little. I mean, too too big to climb at the time, but not nearly as big as she is now or would be now. But I used to sit in the roots of that tree and read all the time. And that's why you kids hug trees. No, that was one of the places I went when I just wanted to be alone or when I was lonely, I'd go sit with the tree. You know where my safe place was? It was in plain sight. If you hide under your bed correctly and pull a sheet a certain way, you blend in with everything else. Oh honey, there used to be this little room under our staircase that I was small enough that I could, I made a little playroom out of it. It was a coat closet, but I could move all the coats, and I made this cozy little reading space in there with light and everything, and they could never find me in there. You know, that actually sounds amazing. It was. Wow. Kind of creepy, though, after my brothers convinced me we had a ghost in the house. Hmm. How you like in Minecraft? Oh, uh, fuck Minecraft, dude. I'm so fucking upset. <laughs> so fucking upset. I lost my game last night. 
we went to go put it into play and it said file corrupted and there's no way to fix the file so the game that the girls and Ray and I have been working on all this time poof gone hence my philosophy about, philosophy about how the fuck do you spend a year of your life on a fucking video game Okay, I play with the girls because it is a teaching opportunity. That is why I, I saw it for what it was. And I took the opportunity. Right? And yeah, I dig it. When I just want to zone the fuck out and don't really want to think about shit, let me play with blocks. It's something that we did in our childhood that brought us comfort. Why wouldn't it bring us comfort? And then you have people like me who are obsessed with the landscape. I need to know the geography of where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like surprises. <laughs> maybe I wanted to play Christopher Columbus because maybe this time I would go off the edge of the And all we need here is... <laughs> Halfway down, we'll go and go down. Issues highly intelligent. Well, okay, the good thing about these games, though, is that not only are they hand eye coordination to the hilt, especially the Marvel game, but you have to problem solve. And when you're problem solving, especially with the Marvel one, guess what you're learning? Hmm. Geometry. Think about it. Yeah. And with the other one, you're learning problem solving, and it's basically physics. How do I get from point A to point B the quickest, right? Is that why you asked me from... Or is that why you told me why she was going to be a physicist? Honey, I've seen this kid solve some pretty complex problems. So it teaches her to... And I've mm -hmm. seen her sit and do big puzzles, like, quickly. And she reminds me of your little sister. So teaching her is going to be a pain in the... No, you just have to keep feeding her new information all the time. That, that's how you got to do it. You just got to keep feeding her new information all the time. Speaking of new information, I got my hands on an old book I actually enjoyed reading. Yeah? Yeah. It's the Encyclopedia of Ghosts, Folklore, and Urban Legends. Nice. A to Z. Nice. So I'm like... See, and that's funny, because y'all, I have books like that, but most of my books are like mythology and serial killers. <laughs> Great combination, right? Oh, a yeah. lot of history in there, though, too, right? Mm hmm And I do have some religious books in there. Interesting. Yes, I have a very eclectic book collection. You know, okay. Because it was an incredible manual, I do have a copy of Mein Kampf. And... I don't know if you can look at things from certain perspectives. The man was a fucking genius. His plan, what he was doing, the way he executed it was completely ingenious. But when you really look at history, he wasn't the first person to do this. The Romans did this. It worked for the Romans, didn't it? So why wouldn't you take that same philosophy? Kind of crazy, huh? Yeah. But damn. I, that's yeah. one of the things that I overstudied, and that just whole scenario breaks my fucking heart. You know, us also teaching the girls problem-solving through games... Also, wow, you're still on games? We're over here on Hitler, honey. <laughs> no, okay, what I was going to say is, do you remember the lady that used to live behind us when you guys were kids, Eve? Yeah. 
Do you know that she was a Holocaust survivor? Yeah, actually. I remember a story she told us about it. Her and I had many long conversations about that. And what an amazing woman. That's part of why I didn't care that she used to steal my cat for like a month at a time. (laughs) She loved Kerbaba. And Kerbaba just adored her. She gave him fish. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a sweet kitty. Never forget the day Chopper brought home a freaking live My snake. birthday, as a matter of fact. I opened the door because the cat's out there garbled, meowing hello, which is how we let you know we want it in. And I looked down and my cat, orange, dark orange cat, tabby cat to be specific, who's, I just, I love, I lived in the land of the tabbies. I love fucking tabby cats. But he's standing up and he's looking at me and there's this thing in his mouth and it's moving. So I open the door and he drops a live garter snake at my feet. And so I pick it up and I put it in an aquarium just so that everybody could see it because nobody would ever believe me that my fucking cat brought me a garter snake for my birthday. (laughs) It was the coolest fucking thing ever. Remember that one I ended up with because of him? I ended up poking it with a stick and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How about your cat that chased the raccoon out of our yard? That was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Okay, Psycho. Okay, this cat's name. Psycho broke the ladybug cat. Okay, Ray was very young when she got this cat. Mm-hmm. Her younger sibling's grandpa named him Psycho because he was a little psycho shit when he was little and he'd run through the house at 3 o'clock in the morning clawing everybody's faces that he could get to. (laughs) Ray named it Ladybug and I named it Broke Did because my son used to carry it by its throat and this cat wouldn't purr for shit so I used to tell him you can't do that you broke did him so he's the psycho Broke Did Ladybug cat. But this cat is like huge. And it's a very, very cross-eyed white Siamese mix. And he comes out from under our car chasing something. And he's like literally on the ass of this fucking raccoon that's twice his size. Smacking it in the ass. (laughs) And this thing just kept looking back at him like, you know I could fucking eat you, right? And he's like, don't care, bat, don't care, bat, get the fuck out, bat. Right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook. Yeah, there you go. Hey, he got the. And then, as soon as the raccoon was off of our property and into the other yard, he laid down and he was like, "I told you I was king, bitch." (laughs) Oh my goodness. Or how about Crybaby and the Fox? Holy fuck, that was a crazy one. We lived out by a, na- by a wildlife refuge. Um, the one that I like to go shoot at was walking distance from our house for like 11 years. And my cat did not like the fox that took up residence around our house. And so he'd fight with it. And this cat came home and his paw was like fucking Mickey Mouse hand. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck happened here? And it was abscess. He stayed in the house, we got him all fixed up, and he got all better, and as soon as he was better, he went out, and we never saw that fucking fox again. (laughs) And that cat is my current cat's dad. Mouthy little fuckers. He's Siamese, what do you expect? (laughs) <laughs> okay, yes, he is a tuxedo kitty, but he is blue point and flame point Siamese and tabby. That's like the best combination. That's why he's a mouthy little bastard. Oh, he uh, does call Hope. I know. He gives everybody he loves a name. Aww, so he actually loves her? Yes. Oh, it's funny. He hisses at her, but he's 
he's only went to strike at her once that I've seen, and that's because she was all riled up, and she's like sidewinding thing to him. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What are you going to do? <laughs> And he's like, do I strike? Do I run? Do I strike? Do I? And he ran. Oh, he's thing. But I'm glad he ran. My cat is like 15 years old. This dude is like been with me forever. You know what his favorite thing to do is? I seen him do it. You forgot bitch claw to the nose. Yes, bitch claw to the nose. He's got one little, his little middle claw. He sticks that one out and no other one and just let you remember that he's got claws. Although he hasn't been very nice to me. He kind of mad at me right now. <laughs> Fucking dog. Another chip wasn't the big one enough. <laughs> How big's this fucker gonna get? <laughs> Is it going to try to eat me, Mom? Come on now. <laughs> it's okay. Nobis gave me her punishment finally, and that was digging her claws in the really tender part of your leg. Oh, she did that to me, too. I have a claw print on my leg from her because they're just bad. They're like, another fucking dog, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> fucking puppy, no less! Well, what do you expect the dog would eat it if it was any older? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Yes, our cat and our, our pets have a very animated life, let me tell you. <laughs> Oh, Ilford today yelling at the little dog next door. I got my own little dog. Fuck you. <laughs> he was all kinds of mad. <laughs> Stay away from my little dog. She's mine. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, Katie. So what were you seriously trying to talk about? I don't remember. You get me on goofy subjects. Oh, we were talking about a tree. Yeah. Yeah? Well, you know what? I fell in love with my maple tree, too. But, you know, you can't very well dig up a 20-foot tree and take it with you. (laughs) (laughs) You could, but there might be some repercussions with that one. I'm sorry, there's a huge crater in the front lawn. I don't know what the fuck happened. Are you sure it wasn't a meteorite? (laughs) The one in the backyard, I'm damn sure that was a meteorite. The little ones, it's just, it's just scraps of the meteorite. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, I almost did dig up my rose bush, but then I thought that usually when they've been that, They've been there for that long. Doing that traumatizes them. And they have a tendency to die. We didn't want it to die. No, that rose bush was planted by my kids' dad's grandmother. And I brought it back to life because that thing was so pathetic when I got to it. I was like, oh my goodness. And then by the time we moved, it was like fucking eight foot spikes of fucking red flowers all summer long it was a happy motherfucker and it was even spreading across the yard which was even cooler but and I know this is what you really wanted to get to so let's be a little serious here for a minute and actually tell them something very cool but scientific why did that rose bush do so well because you were putting happy molecules in it. Oh, honey. I put so much love into that goddamn thing, and so did you kids. Yeah, we did. And it flourished. Right? So, what did we learn that was really cool? Do you want to be the smart one tonight? I'll be the... I'll be the... Did it do... But if you put love and time into something, it grows. Oh, God, we already knew that. Come on, Mal. What was the thing that, like, blew my mind? Okay, she's gonna make me do it. God damn it. Yeah, I was trying to give you time to look, to be the smart one. 
You remember Granny Juju? Oh yeah, Granny Juju exists. Granny Juju's real. It is real. On a molecular level, it's actually... It's actually uh, quantum physics. And I really don't know much about it, so... I like am like generalizing I'm still learning because I actually have been doing some research on it and I'm like totally like whoa until they get to the math part of it and then I'm like do no whoa <laughs> right <clears throat> no all you hear is <laughs> but anyhow that's what you hear with your mouth no, oh, fuck math. Oh my god. <laughs> fuck your factoring. I can't do it. I hate numbers. Fuck. They don't make sense to me. They just don't. I don't understand them and I jumble them and... Oh, fun, fun. But, okay, so the way that it was explained to me is how I'll explain it because we were talking about my belief about giving people energy. And that you give a piece of yourself to the people you come in contact with, right? Mm-hmm. And I always call it basically planting a seed. Because, well, you know what? I'm a generally happy person. Here, have a little tiny bit of happiness to go and all that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just strap you up in the stadium. And My little guys are fighters. Maybe they'll make some headway, right? <laughs> Just strap you up in the stadium and spin you. But so, I learned that, and this is something that I already know, is that people vibrate at different frequencies. And the higher the frequency, the more healing it is, right? Right. And we also know this because of Royal Raymond Wright's research. So that is a given. That is a scientific fact that is a given that probably a lot of people don't really know about. Okay. So, you vibrate at a frequency and it's like a magnet. And I'm using a magnet because that's the best way to explain it because the molecules are charged. So, they go through you and they are charged with your energy and then they go out and go through and deposit your energy and all of the things around you. So... Basically, if you vibrate at a high frequency, your energy, no matter what it is, is healing. So, in essence, through the molecules and all that crazy shit, that is actually what is happening all the time. And my theory is that the reason why empaths are the way that they are, and I know this from experience... Is because when you get around low vibrating people and their molecules come in contact with your energy, you're like, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? Where did you come from? Get it out, get it out, right? Because it right. disturbs your peace. And when you're like completely surrounded by it, sometimes it's just really oppressing. Plus is positive, minus is negative. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I thought that was really cool. So Granny Juju really is real. And vibrations are magical. And what is vibration? Sound. This would say sound waves, isn't it? Yes. So literally... We are the key to all magic because it all comes from us, right? Right. We won't even get into my thoughts on the ethereal world because I had a very intense conversation with two very incredibly intelligent people about this. And I'm still trying to digest it. Hmm. And I don't want everybody to be like, yeah, you lost me there. See ya. You know? <laughs> But yeah, I was like, I, yeah. And there is a, I found out there is a company in Denmark that created a game to help regular, ordinary people help them with their quantum physics. And with this game, it was finding solutions to moving atoms. 
And they said that through that research, they actually found a few solutions to the problems they were having. And these are like doctors of quantum physics. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <coughs> I tried to find the game, but I couldn't find it because I wanted to play it because it looked really cool. I love shit like that. I don't know what it is. I just love problem solving and moving things from A to B. It's, it's obsessive. <laughs> You're funny. No, it is. It's just one of those things. I don't know. I have a fascination with how shit works. Pika Pikachu. This. <laughs> Wow. I guess I am the smart one tonight. <laughs> oh my god. So, you got any more subjects or am I off the hook? Can I be dumb now? <laughs> um, in other news, I don't know. I don't have another topic. Why would you not have another topic? I don't know. I was uh, trying to brainstorm while I was out there. Yeah? And, you know, I, 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 I like reading obscure things. Yeah? Yeah. So do I. So does that mean you want me to read the thing I read to you earlier that I said we should read tonight? <laughs> Is that what you're leading up to? No, not necessarily. I was just saying I like reading obscure things. I do too. But most people find the shit that's obscure that I like to read boring. I found an illustrated deluxe edition of um, mythology. Which one? Um... I forget. If it ain't bullfinch, don't believe it. Okay. And I have Bullfinch's complete collection, so if you want to read it, I have it. And I probably have marked some of my favorite stories in there. Because it's my fucking book and it's not a collector's item. Yeah. Honey, you need to go through my books. I've got some really fucking cool books in there that you'd probably thoroughly enjoy. Yeah? Yeah, I even have Alice in Wonderland in there. And Through the Looking Glass. By the way, funniest fucking book I've ever read in my life. Your looking glass? No. Alice in Wonderland. Uh. It's it's amusing, but very relevant. <laughs> Let's just say that. I don't know, maybe it's just me <coughs> analyzing everything. No. You know, I haven't read Alice in Wonderland yet. Well, you have had it read to you, but you were probably too young to remember. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm sorry I traumatized you with the real stories instead of this fucking PC bullshit. You know. Yeah, man, the wolf gets to eat them! <laughs> they eat the wolf?! <laughs> She fucking dies? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> the Greyhound bus. Ah, oh, the Greyhound bus. Oh my goodness. That <sighs> poor little lamb. Yeah, I was so sick of that goddamn lamb. <laughs> and you gotta remember, part of the reason I was so sick of that goddamn lamb was because of the fucking song that never ends. <sighs> Lamb chop was now on my plate instead of <laughs> running around singing that fucking song. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> I can't believe. Oh, you already told this story. In short, my youngest daughter traumatized a whole class of fucking kindergartners by singing my fucking version of the song <laughs> instead of the real one. Came home, looked me dead in my eye, and said, We sang, Mary had a little lamb today, Mom. I was like, oh, fuck. And she's like, that is not how that song goes. <laughs> You 
You also, you're right, you're right. You also got tired of the fat fox going fishing. <sighs> yes. Goodness. I did. I don't remember that song either. Yes, I, I was notorious for that. <laughs> one fat fox went fishing one day on a farm. Oh, please don't do that to me. Oh my goodness. It's just a matter of time before that is all I hear again. Please let me enjoy the no fox time. You know what song I don't miss? Hmm. Fucking Barney. <laughs> I mean, okay, I appreciated the half hour and it teaching you guys shit, but Jesus fuck. Ugh. <sighs> Have you ever caught the kids singing the Kipo, th a Kipo song? Yes. I catch Lonnie singing everything, even stuff that's not songs. <laughs> she does like, I, I, I rubbed off on her, I guess, because I sing to myself while I'm doing shit, and sometimes I sing about what I'm doing, because hey, you know, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Singing. I'm cute and I spin and I kick and I spin and I kick. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Life is just well. So. So. You're so not talkative tonight, and I'm like, I was all like, I was all really really in a good mood yesterday and just like I got so much cool shit I learned I'm like dude and now I'm like eh eh mm. eh you know creating a ghost is gonna be difficult <coughs> yeah 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 yep yeah. So I started with the iguana hats and coming up with names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about sketching on that? Nope, I'm just fucking doing it. Some of them are gonna look like Robin Hood and some little top hats and I might make a couple monocles and Maybe some, uh, what are those things that they used to wear where the, 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 ah, fuck, I can't remember what they're called. They're like the real fancy stuff that was totally pointless. Yeah. You know, it's one thing I'm thankful for from history. Hmm. That women can wear pants. <laughs> I went to school with a girl, and I can't remember what religion it was that she was, but they weren't allowed to wear pants ever, the girls. Yeah. And I always thought that was the craziest thing. I'd be like, how could you live in a dress? I'd be getting yelled at all the time because it'd be constantly, well, that was what I was always getting yelled at anyway for because I was always ripping my dresses. How did you do that? I was climbing the tree. Why were you climbing the tree in a dress? Because it was there. <laughs> I, I used to have a skirts with shorts underneath them. I know. That's the only way that I would allow you kids to wear skirts when you were kids was if they were skirts instead. Yeah, I had a pair and we hopped the fence from the middle school into the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And I got caught and I ripped them. Yep. I didn't condone that behavior, but I understand because I won't say that I never stuck into the cemetery in the middle of the night. Well, it was during we the day. We used to go play tag all high as fuck in the cemetery in the middle of the night. <laughs> it was during the day, Mom. It was oh, during the day. Yeah, it's creep way creepier in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't know. But that way was, creepier. That was the only way that I could go hang out in the cemetery. <laughs> it, it was great. 
Like, I wasn't supposed to be there either, but, you know, kids find a way. Yeah, they do. Well, okay, I was the youngest of four kids, so I had to be real creative. Because none of the other shit worked because it had already been pulled three times, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I got real creative with my shit. I guess that's one of the blessings of being the youngest is that you ha are forced to get creative. <laughs> yeah. You do. Yeah, very much so. But you also have the option to turn on those little sad eyes and the little quivery lip and everybody's like, oh, God damn it, because you're the youngest and you're the last that they're going to have, so you're like the baby. <laughs> but the only, okay, you with the quivering lip, but the only kid that could give me that look and I just fucking melt no matter what was your youngest sister. It's kind of like with you and Lola. Yeah, but she had that eye, that eye flash batten down, and it was like, don't do that, don't do it, don't do it, just don't do it. And Lonnie's got those big brown eyes, and it's like, oh god, no. <laughs> I'm getting soft in my old age, god damn it. <laughs> what do you want? Anything to stop. <laughs> See, now that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. She doesn't do it often. Yeah. Yeah. Guess it's a good thing. It is. It is. It's supposed to be raising strong women, right? Right. That's what it was about. Well, I, I, I just. I feel like getting emotion out is a good thing. It is. It is an excellent thing until it becomes destructive. And it can become destructive with just words. So that's a slippery slope. Right? Right. I mean, like, with kids, they should be able to get their feelings out. Really? Are you the one that woke up with a black eye because the little kid was mad at you because daddy laughed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real good to get those emotions out, right? <laughs> Not those emotions. <laughs> Sarah, listen, if you're listening, Mr. Tubbs, she seriously punched me in my eye before I woke up because she was mad because you left. <laughs> and then the first thing she says to me when I get up, it's like, Daddy's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a black eye, god damn it. Little monster, man. Like, seriously, we need to set up an obstacle course in the backyard for this uh, kid. He says I'm sorry. It's okay. It, it, dude, this kid has given me so many black eyes in just five fucking years. It's not even funny. I think it's <laughs> become a game. <laughs> Granny's a little golf girl. Let's just permanently black her <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> get into you. Oh, it sounds horrible, but it is what it is. But you always make a joke out of it. Well, until she's stabbing me, I just don't see the reason to get that mad about it. She's a little heathen. Very strong-willed child, and she's got her own idea. Okay, Rowan's idea. <laughs> this is great. We were talking about people walking their dogs. And she says, uh-uh, the dog walks the person. So Rowan honestly, truly believes <laughs> that the dogs walk the people. 
And if you look at it from her perspective and not knowing any differently, the dog walks at the end of the leash leading the person, so therefore you would deduce that the dog is walking the person, not the other way around. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that was an interesting conversation. She understands that people don't walk their dogs, but Ilford walks her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You gotta love when kids come up with stuff like <clears throat> that, right? At least she stopped trying to ride him. Yeah, she still does on occasion, but... That dog takes her for a freaking ride. Oh, I know he does. He's just like, okay, you want a ride? Do, 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 do. I know he does. And a couple of times she's actually been able to hold on. And he's really filled out a lot over the past year. He is like, I love his little wrinkles, so his little folds. And his little chubby folds are so cute. <laughs> They're cute, and you tell he's looking all mad, and he's Rick Von Rico. Okay. Right. Rick Von Rico is what we call him when he's being bad. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Lots of things, but what? My, uh, all the way down command for him. I, I, I joke because you call the other dog the pig and cow. Mm -hmm. I, I mooed at my dog the other day and I told him, moo, Bessie, moo. And he looks at me and lays all the way down and looks at me like he's in trouble. Now he was like, are you having a seizure or something? Because <laughs> Lonnie doesn't make sense right before, so I'm just going to watch you to make sure you're okay, okay? <laughs> if something happens, I'm right here. Well, he, you also got to remember, I'm, I have one screw missing. I'm telling you, that fucking dog is going to stand up one day and moo at me. <laughs> I was like, I fucking knew it. Yeah, the day the dog moves at you is the day that we treat her like a cow. Nah, that's the day you, like, lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> Granny broke her reality. <laughs> Granny's gone. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but Granny's gone. <laughs> and she ain't coming back, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, I just should not have said that because that leads into that other thing and I'm not going to talk about it. I've got like a million fucking questions. Hmm. Okay, like a million and three. <laughs> okay. She actually does have a million and one questions. No, a million and three. A million and three, huh? Yep, a million and three. And sadly, the only thing that we can do with this is hypothesize and use the science behind it. And I think I have a really strong hypothesis, but there's no way to prove it. Right. I mean, the science is there, but there's no way to actually prove it. Okay. And that's what happens when you try to figure out the mysteries of the universe. You end up having to hypothesize and decide if you believe what you hypothesize. Well, here is here. Yeah. Well, no, because the science that I learned proves that I was right about the magic all the time. It's in us. 
it is us. See, okay. The science behind what I had hypothesized, and I don't know that I'll share the hypothesis, so I'm sorry. That's just something I'm still thinking out. But if you go by Freud's philosophy, then at one point in time, the human brain was whole. And when the brain split, it altered our reality. And during a conversation about this earlier, or this weekend, we were talking about when you take that philosophy and you apply it to history, when you stop and you think about it, at one point in time, we were animals. We had animal instincts, right? So, we had a different brain because we needed to have heightened senses. We had to have stamina. Stamina, stamina, yeah, stamina, stamina, stamina. You know what I'm talking about. Stamina. <laughs> okay. All of these things so that you could survive in a world where you were A, an apex predator, and B, prey. Right? Right. So let's take into consideration what happens to a person that loses their sight. Bam. Their sense of touch gets heightened. They co- Their body compensates in other ways. Right? Right. Okay, so if our body can compensate in other ways by heightening these senses, it's already there. Right? right. Okay, so... In a way, Freud's theory was completely accurate. And what it is, is that when we settled down, when we changed our environment, we changed our reality, and different things became important. So that severed some of the knowledge and some of the sensory stuff that we had because we didn't need it anymore, right? Right. And this has been a progressive thing throughout the ages that that wall of stuff that we didn't, we don't think we need to know anymore keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Right. And so when you ask the question, what's in the other 90% of our brain that we don't use, and that is a rough number, it fluctuates as I was told, and I'm just using that as a basis, but what's in the other 90% of our brain? It's all of our animal instincts. Right? Right. I was about to say it's the primal instincts, isn't it? Exactly. It's the things that we no longer use. And that's why some people, and obviously some people can tap into it, right? Right. I mean, there have been cases where they have actually documented some really weird shit of people actually doing that and proof and I will have to get that story from Mr. Tubbs again because he told me one about some monks or maybe I can tell it I think I remember it well enough but these monks were given two tape cassettes with Morse code on it and they were told to change one thing in it and they did it but what they also did was they changed the one that was locked away in a vault that nobody could get to and nobody knows how they did it But if you think about atoms, atoms can be in a thousand places at once. And that goes along with the theory that all time is happening at the same time. Yeah. So, I mean, it it gets like really crazy from there. And it's like, dude, I can see it all. But you really, if you want to evaluate it, you need to go further back in time because that's where a lot of the answers are. And like I said, it's just a hypothesis. There's no real way to prove it. But the science is there to yeah. make it a possibility. And well, the thing is, is that our biggest problem when it comes to understanding history is that we think with a 20th century mind when these people didn't think like us at all. 
And I, okay, come on, let's be realistic here. And people are probably going to get upset by this analogy, but let's be honest. A hundred years ago, 11-year-old girls were being married off to people old enough to be their fathers for dowries. This is a hundred years ago. Okay, maybe a little over. We'll call 150. So how much have we really evolved from the past? You know, the leaps and bounds that have been happening in the past hundred years are amazing. Think about it. Yeah. It is amazing. It's because people are breaking away from the common mindset. At this point, People are questioning shit. They're no longer the blind cows running around living their lives thinking they're happy. See, people don't realize that the system is really rigged. Yeah. But normal people aren't supposed to know that. Well, that got dark all of a sudden. Yeah, Woo, yeah. We were not getting politics. I'm very opinionated and it always gets me in trouble. Mm -hmm. And people are really mad at me. Mm. Oh, is that that look? Is that that look? Yeah, it's that look. Okay, so it's either midnight snack time or get the fuck off my stream time. Which is it? Which one do you think it is? I think it's get the fuck off my stream so I can go have my midnight and I can go to bed. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you're silly. <laughs> Feels like it's both. <laughs> okay, so what did we learn tonight? We learned a lot. Wow. I, do you know what? Like some about quantum you should, physics. You should replace this, Galani Burke, because you are just. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> we let we learned. Granny has a tree that she absolutely loves. We had conversation about some quantum physics yes screw the math part of it though oh if you can do math fuck yeah do the math i can't do the math i'm visual when it comes to stuff like that see i suck at math but what i do and all that i do is geometry photography is just about nothing but geometry and i couldn't map it out for you in mathematical terms but i can see it so, yeah, something like that. <laughs> what did Mr. Dubs say? I feel like she wants us off the fucking street. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> Gosh, you're just being a pain. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm kidding, end your stream. Thank you for coming out and watching our stream. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a great night, morning, day, whenever you see this. Good night. Much love. Much love.